Ave Maria. At that time, Jesus said to his disciples, Do not think that I have come to send a peace upon the earth. I have come to bring a sword, not peace. For I have come to set a man at variance with his father, and a daughter with her mother, and a daughter-in-law with her mother-in-law. And a man's enemies will be those of his own household. He who loves father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. And he who loves son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. And he who does not take up his cross and follow me is not worthy of me. He who finds his life will lose it, and he who loses his life for my sake will find it. He who receives you receives me, and he who receives me receives him who sent me. He who receives a prophet because he's a prophet shall receive a prophet's reward. And he who receives a just man because he is a just man shall receive a just man's reward. And whoever gives to one of these little ones but a cup of cold water to drink because he's a disciple, amen, I say to you, he shall not lose his reward. Today we celebrate the Feast of St. Hermagild. He lived, in fact, he was a son, together with his brother, um, Ricard. He was the son of the king of the Visigoths in Spain during the 6th century, um, about in the middle of the 500s AD. His father, um, Ludwigard, was an Arian, which meant essentially that he rejected the divinity of Christ. He did not, the Arians did not believe that Christ is God. They said he was uh, the first creature God created. And to get over the other difficulties, they said it was he, that first creature, who created all things visible. But they denied absolutely that he was God, the son of God. Yes, but as we would understand it by adoption, because being a creature, he didn't have the same nature as God. So the Visigoths had control of all of Spain, Portugal, sub southern France, and of course in the, in the east as, as well, they were highly influential. The king, um, Ludigard, decided to divide his kingdom between his two sons. And so he had um, Hermegil as the king of um, what is today um, Saragossa. Um, which was okay because they were Arians. And the king did this because the monarchy wasn't hereditary. The grandees of Spain would elect the next king. That same um, method was remained in, po in um, Poland right up until the 19th century. So they, to, to avoid that, the election, he, the, the king decided that his son would be king after him. And so he also arranged a marriage for his son. His, the, the wife chosen was a Catholic. And so, as we would expect, the discussion, the religious discussion began, and Hermogil decided to become a Catholic. This enraged his father, and a persecution began a against um, his son, because the father had tried everything. He tried bribery, he tried intimidation, he threats, all of that were of no avail. And so it ended up with civil war. So the, the, the Emmerger resisted his father with physical force. Um, it, but the, the, the king's forces, his father's forces were far superior. So he had to escape to Cordoba. And there, from there, he asked for assistance from the Eastern emperor, but that was not possible because the Persians at the time were threatening the Eastern Empire. And Rome certainly couldn't help. So eventually, 
um, Homergill surrendered. But the surrender was conditional. His father um, sent his brother, um, Ricard, to him with promises that if he surrendered, he wouldn't have to change his faith, that he would be restored and, and so on. Hermogil believed his father, but once he had surrendered, the father insisted that he abandon his Catholic faith and return to um, Arianism, which he refused. And so he was imprisoned. And in prison, he was tortured and refused to change his, his, his mind. At this, at this point, the, the, the king sent the, uh, the bishop, who was an Arian, to his son in prison with promises again if he would change. And Hamagil th threw out the, the bishop um, fr from prison, told him to leave him alone, that he had found the true faith and he would not um, deny Christ his God. This enraged the king to such a degree that he had Hamagil um, killed on the spot. His head was split in, in two. The result was, in fact, to the conversion of his brother Ricard, and so Spain became once more Catholic. And so we have this, um, the, the gospel, today's gospel, which tells us um, what is expected of us if we are to be followers of Christ. Our Lord had already said to his disciples, whom he had sent out to, to, to preach to the places he himself would visit, he'd send them out and he warned them that he was sending them as lambs among wolves. He told them they should expect to be persecuted um, and that they would even be killed. So it, he's essentially say, he essentially said to them, you're going to have enemies on the outside. But those are not the worst of enemies, those who are external to us. The most dangerous enemies are inside our homes. In other words, our personal relationships. And this is what our Lord said to his disciples. And it certainly applied to St. Hermogil, and it applies to many other saints who would rather lose the, the, the natural relationships with, with family rather than to lose the supernatural relationship with Christ. Our Lord said to his disciples, do not think I've come to send peace upon the earth. He didn't say bring, he said send. I have not come to send peace upon the earth. But I have come to bring a sword, not peace. So the sword is essentially the word of God. And so it is a sign of authority, it's a, a sign of justice, and it's a, also a sign of punishment. This is what he has come to bring. So by his own authority, he is in fact bringing division. Because peace is, in most cases, um, amoral. It is neither good nor bad. We think of it as a good, but we need to remember that thieves can live at peace. They have a common plan, and they have a common act, intention, and they have a common mission. And so when we think of the Tower of Babel, the people who built, who were, who were building the temple had an evil intent. One, they, wanted, they did not want to be scattered over the face of the earth. Two, they thought they could challenge God. We will ascend to heaven. Likewise, we see when Paul was brought before the Sahendrin, they were all united against him. But he recognized there was different, two different camps, the Sadducees and the Pharisees. And so he appealed to one side. He said, I'm a son of a Pharisee. That's why I'm being persecuted. And immediately there was division. So we have examples of there being unity in evil. But we are looking for a greater unity, a true peace, which is not like the world gives, but rather that which God gives, a unity or peace with God first and foremost. 
And so the Lord says, I've not come to bring peace, but a sword. And what kind of sword? He said, a sword such that there will be division even within the most natural of relationships, the family. I've come to set a man at variance with his father and a daughter with her mother, the daughter-in-law with mother-in-law. And a man's enemies will be those of his own household. We can certainly take it at the natural level because we have St. Um, Kermit Gill as an example, becoming a Catholic, embracing the truth that Christ is God, he immediately lost the affection of his father. And what is very striking is that once we, once a person becomes a Catholic, immediately the enemies appear. The, when the apostles started to preach the resurrection of our Lord and consequently his divinity, immediately the Jews started persecuting them. Then what were they doing that was so wrong? They were preaching the truth that Christ is risen from the dead and that Christ is God. Similarly, in the Roman Empire, what were Christians doing? What were Catholics doing? But preaching exactly that, Christ has risen from the dead and they were persecuted. The pagans, and there were many different pagan gods and pagan religions, they didn't persecute each other. And we find throughout the history of the church that the at whenever there's an attack on, on, on religion, it's always the Catholic church. And even when we, in our day, where there are so many Protestant sects, nobody attacks them, nobody criticizes them. But the Catholic Church, there's always a comment, even from those who profess to be followers of Christ. Why? Because our Lord himself said that he came not to bring peace, but a sword. And that the, the sword will separate us from the world. Essentially, that is what we are, are fighting, a separation from the world. That we no longer think the way the world thinks. The world is quite happy with a religion that does not profess to be true or to have all the truth. It's quite happy with that. But once we profess to have the whole truth, there's a serious problem. But of course, we know that, that the root of the problem come is, the, is, is from the underworld. But we can look also look at, at, at it in another way, because each one of us is, is the man. And who is our father but Adam? We can all claim Adam as our father. And so Christ's coming has separated us from Adam because Adam was disobedient and Christ calls us to obedience. So there is that rupture. And who is our mother but Eve? And what did Eve do? But she did not believe. And so we have, likewise, we are separated from her inasmuch as we do believe. And the mother-in-law is essentially the world or the synagogue from whom we are separated because we are, have been, as St. Paul says, a spouse to Christ. So we, we necessarily will have this enmity deep within us. The Lord also goes on to say that it is not only in the natural um, order that we're going to have opposition, but it, it even comes within ourselves as well. And in saying this, it's nothing extraordinary because we, we, we can think of the, of, the, uh, of the Old Testament where in, in Deuteronomy, the Lord um, speaking to Moses said the, to, to, um, to, to the Israelites, if anybody breaks any one of these commandments, and whether it was the Sabbath or whether it was um, in, in regard to, to, to worship, he said, let him be stoned by the community and even by his parents. We have this similar thing in, in, in um, Exodus where the people were worshiping the 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 golden calf. And Moses called out and says, those who are on the side of the Lord stand with me. 
and the tribe of Levi stood with him. And then Moses gave the command with the sword to go and kill everyone who has worshipped the boy, including, he said, your parents and your brothers and your children. And for this, the, the Israelites, the, the Levites, were regarded as favored. They, they became the priestly ca caste. So our Lord was building up on this and telling us very much the same thing, that we have to be ready to let go even of natural affections in our desire to be his followers. And he goes on further to say, he who loves father or mother more than me is not worthy of me, which is essentially a claim to divinity. He who loves son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. But only God can make such a demand of us. And so we see here clearly a claim to divinity because only he who creates us can demand that of us. And then he tells us finally that anyone who does not take up his cross and follow me is not worthy of me. So even our own life we are to hold uh, as inferior to our love of him, even to the point of giving up our life. This is what he demands of us. And who can demand that but God alone? So even on this basic um, um, concept, we can see that Christ truly is God. And therefore, with St. Hermagil, we, we ask that we have the, the, the courage and the fidelity to remain fast, firmly fixed in Christ Jesus our Lord because there is no other name by which we can be saved. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Come,